So we've been looking at accounting for income taxes. What about net operating losses? A net operating loss is a tax term. It refers to when a business has more deductions than income and what results is negative taxable income. So for financial reporting, what journal entries are recorded when there's a net operating loss? And what must be reported on the income statement and the balance sheet in the year of a net operating loss? And what do you do? Do you carry back? Do you carry forward? Well, net operating losses incurred in 2021 and beyond cannot be carried back. So instead, they're carried forward, and they're carried forward indefinitely. So how does a net operating loss carry forward impact current and future taxable income? Well, the benefit of having a net operating loss in the current year is that no income tax is paid in the current year, and there's no debit to income tax expense in the current year either. Instead of a debit to income tax expense, the income statement will actually show a credit, a contra income tax expense. So instead of a debit to an expense, it's going to be a credit to a contra expense. And that contra expense is really a benefit. And that benefit is recorded in the year the NOL is incurred. So in that current year, when you have an N operating loss, you'll debit deferred tax asset and credit income tax benefit due to loss carry forward. So the balance sheet will show an asset. The income statement will show a contra expense. Contra meaning opposite of. So the income statement will show the opposite of an expense. So you wouldn't have any expense for income taxes in the year of an NOL. So let's do one where we record the net operating loss in the current year, and then we'll see what happens in the first carry forward year. We got Barrett Corp experiencing a net operating loss of 200,000 in the current year. And the tax rate in the current year is 21%, but that doesn't really matter because they're not gonna pay any tax in the current year since they have a loss. The enacted rate for future years, that's what's important, 30%. To recognize the deferred tax consequence, what's Barrett Corp gonna do? They're gonna record the following in the current year. Step one is to record the DTA, the deferred tax asset from the NOL carry forward. And that's calculated based on the NOL of 200,000 times the enacted rate of 30%. So you'll debit deferred tax asset for 60,000 and you'll credit income tax benefit from loss carry forward 60,000. Notice that benefit is recorded and recognized in the year of NOL. So in the year of NOL, one journal entry is made, we set up the deferred tax asset for the NOL amount times the enacted tax rate, and that's a debit to a real asset on the balance sheet known as deferred tax asset. And then our credit is to an income statement account, but not an expense, but a benefit, an income tax benefit from loss carry forward. And that's recognized in full in the year of NOL. So that's the current year. What happens in the following year? Well, assume that in the following year, Barrett Corp has taxable income. They have taxable income, not that much, $1,500 of taxable income, and they had that huge loss last year, right? So they're going to use part of the NOL to offset 80% of taxable income. So notice we're going to use part of the 200000 NOL to offset 80% of taxable income. Why 80%? Because Congress wants every business that has taxable income to pay some tax. Even though they're carrying forward an NOL, Congress expects every business that has taxable income to pay some tax. Therefore, there's now a limit on how much taxable income can be offset in any carry forward year. So because we have $1,500 of taxable income in the carry forward year, the most we can offset is 80% of that or $1,200. So 1,200 of taxable income will be offset by the NOL carry forward, because that's the maximum percentage that can be offset. Notice that even though we had this huge NOL carry forward, we couldn't use it to offset all $1,500 of taxable income. We can only offset 80% of any given year's taxable income. So by offsetting $1,200 of taxable income, we're actually using up $360 of the deferred tax asset. There's still a lot left, but we are using up 360 of the deferred tax asset, and we're gonna to have to record a journal entry for that. 
So let's review what we've done so far. We said Barrett experienced a net operating loss of 200000 in the current year. And the tax rate in that current year was 21%. But we didn't care about that because they weren't paying taxes in the current year. The enacted rate for future years is what we cared about, 30%. And then we made this journal entry. We multiplied 200,000 times 30%, got 60,000 for the deferred tax asset, and we recognized the income tax benefit from the loss carry forward of 60,000 on the income statement in the year of the NOL. Then we said in the following year, Barrett Corp suddenly had some taxable income, 1,500. And we were gonna use part of that NOL to offset 80%, which is the maximum you can offset in any one year. So 1,500 times 80%, we said 1,200 of taxable income is offset by the NOL carry forward, and that uses up $360 of the deferred tax asset. So we take $1,200, we multiply by 30% tax rate, and look at the first of two journal entries we're gonna make in the year of carry forward. We're gonna credit the deferred tax asset for 360 because we're using it up. And we're gonna debit income tax expense for 360. And you may be wondering, why are we debiting income tax expense when we're not paying any tax? And that's a good question. Because we have taxable income, remember? We have taxable income. We would be paying tax if it wasn't for the fact that we had this deferred tax asset. So by using this deferred tax asset, we're saving money, but we still have an income tax expense to recognize because we had income, right? We had taxable income, so we're going to have income tax expense. Last year, we had no taxable income. We had no income tax expense, but this year, we have taxable income. We still have to recognize income tax expense. We're just not going to pay because we have deferred tax asset and we can use it to save the cash, to save the taxes. And you're saying now, hey, Darius, I thought we could only wipe out 80% of this year's taxable income, right? We only wiped out 1,200 of this year's taxable income. What about the other 300? Yeah, we're still going to have to pay tax on that. So $300 times 30%. We're still going to have to pay $90 and we'll expense that as well. So the second journal entry will record the amount of tax owed for the carry forward year. And that's $90. We're either going to pay the cash now to IRS or record it as income tax payable if we haven't written the check yet. But either way, we're still going to debit income tax expense for 90 and credit cash or income tax payable for 90 so in this carry forward year, we only had to pay $90 of tax, but we still expensed the full amount of $450.